Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy, and today I want to show you a really cool magic trick in Photoshop where you can fix the perspective of a very small element in your photograph without having to try and use all these perspective and warping correction tools. So here's the before. This is with the perspective of the bridge all messed up, and this is the after, after the bridge has been nicely fixed here in Photoshop. So let's jump in. I'll show you all the crazy cool tricks to make this happen. So today I want to show you how you can manually straighten things, certain elements of your photograph so that the whole photograph doesn't get affected by the change. So where this comes about, I was working on this image yesterday right here, and the bridge, as, as you can see in the outside of camera raw edition, wasn't quite right. I needed things to be straight. So how did I do it? Well, I didn't want to sacrifice this nice little line that I have coming through here. This is this perspective line that brings you right up to the bridge. I didn't want to lose that in my image. And I noticed that if I tried to use a perspective warp or if I tried to use an adaptive wide angle, anything to fix that, it wouldn't work. Normal lens corrections weren't even working to fix that bridge. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If you press command or control R, you'll notice that you have rulers that now appear on your image. I'm going to move a ruler over. All you have to do to do that is just click and drag on the inside, and that will give you a guide. This guide is telling me that that bridge is way off from where it actually should be. Now, this is after I've already done lens corrections in Adobe Camera Raw. It just wouldn't pick up this one little spot. Lens corrections typically work from the center. If you notice that, they kind of work from the center and, and fix the distortion from the center. But what about all the other stuff? If you scale it, if you try to warp it, your whole image just gets thrown off. And like I said, I really wanted to keep this nice little flow that I had from these rocks going right into that bridge there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a marquee tool. So up here at the marquee tool, just a regular rectangular marquee, I'm going to grab a big section of my bridge, the whole bridge, just grab that section right there. And then I'm going to press command or control J. So if you look now, if I were to turn the background layer off, that's our new layer on top of our old layer. It's just the bridge. So now I'm going to press command or control T and that's going to get me into what's called free transform mode. So those guides I had, if you press command or control H, that'll make them reappear and disappear. That's command or control H. And I'm going to zoom in here. So I'm just going to zoom in real nice and close to this. And I'm going to take a look at the perspective warp that's happening in this bridge. So to do that, all I have to do is press and hold the control key. You can actually do what's called a perspective warp, but in the free transform mode, which is control T in free transform mode, you can actually work as if you are in perspective mode, but you aren't really in perspective mode. If you press and hold command or control, that will turn your arrow here when you're on the corner right here, that'll turn your arrow into a little white arrow. So I'm pressing and holding control. And what I want to do is while I press and hold control, just pull this out until my bridge starts to match the, uh, the general shape and size of where I want the bridge to be as far as straightness is concerned. And you just push and pull this in, move it around and see exactly where you want that to be. And I can even make this bridge a little bit taller if I want to, and then maybe kind of resituate it here in the scene, press enter. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and I'll zoom in and I'll make sure that my bridge is straight. If I didn't get it straight, I can always go back and try it again. I can press command or control T again, and then just press that control key and maybe pull this out a little bit more so that my bridge is actually straight there. It looks like over here it's not quite straight, so I'll go up to the top one, press control and just warp that in. And I don't think that the Golden Gate Bridge actually goes up completely straight either. Uh, it does kind of get kind of narrow as it goes up, so we'll just go ahead and press uh, enter on that and be okay. So now what I need to do, press command or control H to make my guides go away. Look and see, is it straighter? Yeah, it's much straighter. But if we look here, um, we actually have uh, quite a bit of off kiltered line work now happening around that selection. So what we need to do is just go ahead and make a mask. And with that mask, we're going to brush with black in those areas. And I'm using a Wacom tablet, so this makes my life relatively easy. And what you can do here is you can actually press the forward slash key, and that will get us into what's called the quick mask mode so that we can actually see exactly what it is that we're masking out here. And that's actually pretty nice to do. It just helps us see what it is that we're masking. Basically, I just want to mask that edge a little bit, just mask it out a little bit so that anything that's a hard edge just just goes away. It's going to be really easy to handle right around here in this area because we almost can't even tell 
that we did this here and we'll just keep going around here we might have some issues when we start to get to this area so i'll save that for last and again to turn that quick mask off i'll just press that forward slash key again and i've turned that quick mask off so you can see we still need to do some painting over here to make these clouds look a little bit more realistic and make my brush size just a little bit bigger i always use a soft edge brush when i'm doing this it just makes it look that much better with that soft edge rather than a very hard edged brush you'd start to see almost the same type of line work that you did before and then we'll come over here and we'll just zoom in here a little bit just zoom right on in here get a smaller brush and just start painting away this area. We might have to fabricate some of this in order to make it look right. So what I mean by that is I might have to make a really small brush and just go in here and just delicately paint out this area here. Maybe make that a little bit larger. Again, using that Wacom tablet for the pressure sensitivity to make my life a little bit easier. And just go through there. And that should help us really kind of blend all that in and all we're doing now is just blending in blending all that stuff in so it doesn't look like we did any work here and we'll just make that brush a little bit smaller keep going okay now we'll zoom out and what do we have here here's the before here's the after here's the before here's the after still kind of see some down here in these rocks so i can just make that brush a little bit bigger and just bam hit those rocks a little bit but now we have a perfect perspective uh, for just that one area so what do we do well we still kept that nice little line work that we had here so I, I like i said before when it comes to the composition here with this wide angle lens what i really wanted to do was bring the viewer in right from here have them come right up to the golden gate bridge and also utilize this line over here to kind of bring them in and then right over to that Golden Gate Bridge. So not only was I using the rule of thirds in order to get the viewer to look right here at the Golden Gate Bridge, I was also using some photographic elements to do that. Now, if I would have done this with any other uh, perspective warping, yeah, what happens is um, it takes the whole image and it twists and turns the whole image. And when it twists and turns the whole image, it ruins your composition. So this is just a very selective targeting method for fixing perspective on very small areas. So what did we do? Well, all we did was make a selection around the area that we wanted to fix, Command or Control J to duplicate it, and then we went into Control T, which is transform, into free transform mode, press Control or Command while we move those arrows just to get everything nice and lined up. And remember, those guides are your friend, Command or Control R for your rulers at the top and on the sides of your image, and then you can move those in by clicking and dragging anywhere in those rulers to get things nice and straight and lined up. And then you can press Command or Control H at any time to turn on and off your guides. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I know this is something I use all the time, especially because I shoot very wide uh, quite often. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up, comment, share, send it to a friend, especially a friend that uses wide angle lenses. I'm one of those guys who the wider, the better. You give me as wide as I can. I'm in there, right? If you haven't subscribed, please do so now because I do these tutorials quite often, and you'll be getting them in your inbox as soon as they come out if you're a subscriber to F64 Academy. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Mm -hmm.